The U.S. Supreme Court has three women justices today, but women were not always welcome here. Today, we take for granted that women can do any job, but there first had to be women who could break into what had been a strictly male domain. These pioneers had to have a willingness to explore this unknown and often unfriendly world. One of the most important was Belva Ann Lockwood. I mean, I know she was the first woman to be admitted, and she argued yeah. here at the court. Uh, she was mm -hmm. widowed at a young age. Mm -hmm. um, she did a lot. I mean, she was a very active activist woman. Um, I guess, I don't want to say unafraid, but just very, you know, sure yeah. of herself and or, or seemed to be because she was able to do so much. In the early 19th century, all women were perceived as good for was childbearing and taking care of house and home, their only job being to serve and support her husband. They were often married off as young teenagers. The majority believed that education for women beyond primary school was extraneous. Women rarely went to college and usually only to become teachers. Women couldn't vote and work outside the home as viewed as only fit for men. Belva Ann Bennett was born October 30th, 1830 into the conservative world of rural Royalton, New York. She was good at school and became a teacher at just 14, but still lived with her parents. She dreamed of going to a women's college, but her father disagreed. At 18, resigned to her parents and society's expectations, she married Uriah McNall, who ran a successful sawmill and farm. They had a baby girl named Laura. Belva managed to be content as her husband let her help run the business. In the early 19th century, a group of women began protesting for universal suffrage. These early suffragettes, however, were hardly popular or successful, largely because they were expecting the men to change their minds without giving them reasons to. Belva Lockwood, rather than protest, entered the men's world, became an attorney, and demonstrated mastery of the very law that kept women from voting, an irony for the men who treated women as less than equal. She was a real leader who moved towards suffrage by actions rather than shouting. When Belva's husband died after four years of marriage, she was left a young widow of 22 with a three-year-old daughter. She was forced to reconsider the path society had laid out for her, and trying to figure out how to support herself and her daughter, she realized the importance of making her own decisions. Belva wrote, an ardent student of history, I soon discovered that most of the great men of the country had received a collegiate education, so she defiantly chose to do just that. After attending college at Genesee Seminary, then teaching at a small school in Lockport, New York, Belva looked at her next step. She had developed a strong sense of justice fighting for equal pay for female teachers at the school, as well as successfully fighting for the right of her female students to study physical education and public speaking, like the boys. Inspired by her fellow teacher, friend, and suffragette Susan B. Anthony, she decided to head to Washington, D.C. She felt D.C. was the center of government where all official change happened. It had been a man's domain for over a century and was a foreign place to a single mother from western New York. Belva believed that the institution of marriage, used to formally keep women in virtual bondage to their husbands, should be a joining of equals. So, when she got to Washington, D.C. and met Ezekiel Lockwood, a clergyman, she was thrilled to find a man who viewed her as such. Belva remarried, though she said, this marriage did not cure my mania for the law. I had early conceived a passion for reading the biographies of great men, and had discovered that in almost every instance law has been the stepping stone to greatness. She was certain that, rather than to protest for suffrage, the best way to change the world of men was to be part of the mechanism that drove politics, business, and change. Belva would become a lawyer. 1873 was a critical year for Lockwood. She had fought her way into law school and successfully completed the course of study, only as Justice Ginsburg mentioned, to be told that because she was a woman, the faculty would not grant her diploma, thus withholding from her the professional privilege of becoming a member of the District of Columbia Bar. 
She struggled to overcome this discrimination with patience, negotiation, and by sitting through oral examinations not required of the male candidates. When all of this failed, Lockwood, determined to establish her own law practice, made one last desperate appeal, the one that just Justice Ginsburg mentioned, to the President of the United States, who happened to also be the President ex officio of her law school. She did indeed receive the diploma two weeks later, and days after that was admitted to the DC bar. This permitted her then to set up the larger legal practice that she had intended. After law school graduation, Belva ran a successful firm from her house and office at 619 F Street Northwest in the heart of Washington, DC. She won a variety of cases from murder to divorce. She saw fellow male lawyers on F Street use bicycles to efficiently get around town and to the courts, so she became the first woman in Washington, D.C. to ride one. She never shied away from joining the world of men. Belva was publicly ridiculed for being unladylike, but she was redefining what being a lady was. Belva once wrote, I was not careful as to the nature of my work, so that it was means to an end, and never for a moment stopped to consider whether the labor was such as women were accustomed to do, but only whether I had the ability to perform it. Despite this, Belva later describes a significant court appearance. Every eye in the courtroom was fixed upon me when Justice Drake announced, Mistress Lockwood, you are a woman. For the first time in my life, I began to realize that it was a crime to be a woman. But it was too late to put in a denial, and I at once pleaded guilty to the charge of the court. In exploring the world of men, Belva Lockwood wanted to be fully equal in the profession of law. She needed to be eligible to practice in the highest court in the land, the Supreme Court. Lockwood once again went to Congress, but a bill allowing women to practice in the Supreme Court did not pass. She then went to the Supreme Court itself, but trying to maintain their all-boys club, the justices refused to acknowledge her standing and sent her back to the halls of Congress. She used her experience as a lobbyist to wage a five-year battle against the Supreme Court. Sponsored by Albert Gallatin Riddle, Belva Lockwood finally declared victory on March 3, 1879, when she became the first female lawyer admitted to the Supreme Court. Belva became the first woman to argue a case in the Supreme Court, eventually winning multiple cases, including one multi-million dollar case involving property rights for Native American Cherokees involved in the Trail of Tears. She opened the door to women practicing in any federal court, establishing women in a place where they had once been barred. If it weren't for pioneering explorers like Belva Lockwood, women could have been picketing for 50 more years for the right to vote. Instead of merely protesting, as did the suffragettes, Belva actually entered the man's world and staked both the physical and ideological claim that anything men could do, women could do as well. She left no doubt that women were up to the task. Living proof is in four female Supreme Court justices and women entering law in equal or greater numbers than men. Uh, and I think, yeah, obviously now women are in most fields and are, are very well regarded in a lot of fields. I mean, we've got women justices, we've had a woman solicitor mm -hmm. general, a women attorney general, mm -hmm. uh, we've got women running for president who actually have a shot at it. So I think, yeah. I think we have come a long way. Just as explorers once colonized North America, Belva Lockwood became a pioneer for the women who learned to explore and occupy the world of men. Belva's unparalleled desire for justice, fairness, and equality was based on an omnipresent moral code that appeared to dictate everything she did, even if it sometimes slowed her progress. She chose the American legal system as her world to explore, engage, and ultimately leave permanently changed. <laughs>